starting to flood like in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, absolutely love this thing. Let's get over. Because it is some pretty bad rain today. And let's see, let's pass up this truck. I uh, love having all-wheel drive, like literally zero issues in this kind of weather. Hey, what's up, car fam? Today, we're gonna go for a nice rainy drive here in NorCal. I'm sure you've seen all over the news. We've been getting a bunch of rain this year, which is honestly nice because it gives you a chance to learn your car in different environments and sometimes driving in dry conditions all year long gets pretty boring but thankfully here at NorCal like we always go to the mountains uh, drive in the snow pretty often um, heavy rain all the time so I've had my share living up here of more extreme weather in a sense drove through some blizzards all that good stuff so it's honestly really fun <laughs> and I don't make enough videos about this car, the 2018 Audi SQ5. I just absolutely love this car as a package. Like, it's so much fun to drive. It's practical because you get all of the benefits of having, you know, extra space in the rear, being able to fold the seats all the way completely flat and fitting stuff like we used it during our move. Um, but the highlights really to me is definitely the engine. And then, I don't know if you caught that uh, on camera, but, or if you could hear it, but the exhaust note is just so fun. Now this car on the back, if you look at it, like you literally can't see the exhaust. They have it covered. <laughs> it's tucked under the, um, bottom of the car under the bumper but to me I'd rather take not having an exposed exhaust over having exposed exhaust that don't sound good I'm a huge Civic Type R fan as you probably could tell from the channel it has the triple exhaust system uh, or tips in the back and then you rev it and stuff and it just doesn't sound good this one is not exposed at all <laughs> and you can just hear how much they invested into the exhaust system. So I would pick that over cool looking exhaust, zero sound any day. And so uh, this here, if you're new to the channel or don't really understand what the Audi SQ5 is, it's Audi's Q5, which is like their mid-size compact SUV basically, um, that seats five, but they've turned up all the performance elements to a couple notches. It's a lot of fun. It's 300, it has 369 horsepower and then 354 pound-feet of torque. And one thing I've noticed um, is sometimes on paper, like it literally can't translate to what certain things feel like because two cars could literally have the same exact horsepower and torque, but the way they drive can be completely different prime example I drove a 2021 Acura TLX Type S with 355 horsepower I don't remember the torque on that car but it felt way slower in that car than this one and this is a heavy SUV that I think is like 4,500 pounds uh, one thing I've definitely learned over the years is a really great quality transmission is more important than you know the horsepower and you know capabilities of the engine itself because if the transmission can't translate that power then it's not going to matter how much power you have from the motor because the transmission is really what is the middle man between the two of them and so it just this one here has the zf really strong it has really good crisp shifts not as fast as my dual clutch in my other car but it's still probably maybe just a little slower than that, but I absolutely love how it shifts. I love how they've tuned this car with the, um, dang, that's a lot of water there. With the uh, transmission, for example, if I put an S, 
then obviously the revs go up. But then on upon braking, it uh, basically rev matches and the revs will shoot up. And then you also get the crackles and pops on the exhaust. It's really, really nice. And then the transmission, you know, timing and things like that, super good. Absolutely love it. I should kind of demonstrate here while we can hop on this freeway really quick. So, yeah, this car is just so much fun. It's an SUV, but I call pretty much everything cars. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely love it. This car has so much tuning capability. I know that's what most people are gonna want to do and you know, things like that. It's basically one of those cars that they recently on 034 Motorsports showed that they ran a 10, a little over 10 seconds in this car at, I can't remember the speed but it was super fast. So tuning capability, you could definitely get so much power out of the motor. And then the transmission's really strong. It can definitely handle a lot of performance enhancements. And so I don't have any plans on doing that. The only thing I would want to do... I uh, love this thing off the line. And then I will drive like it just puts the power down like nothing. So. I'll talk about the handling right now. Let's take a corner really quick. Lots of potholes today. Oh, love it. It's starting to flood like in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, absolutely love this thing. Let's get over. Because it is some pretty bad rain today. And let's see, let's pass up this truck. I love having all wheel drive, like literally zero issues in this kind of weather. Proper tires is definitely important, but yeah, so as you can see, definitely pouring today. We've had some harder rain than this, but um, I've definitely got to experience what this car can and can't handle considering the tires I have on here. Um, these are some really great all-season tires, some Yokohamas um, that, I, that came with the car when I bought it last year. And we've, you know, driven with them in the snow and they were plenty capable, so it was great. Anywho, so the only thing that I would want to upgrade and change on this car is the handling. I would rather have a car that, you know, has really sufficient power, but really incredible handling over a super fast car that has more body roll than I want. So this thing, because it's not the one with the MagRide dynamic suspension where it can lower and raise by itself, that one I think is definitely going to be something that handles a little bit better because you can lower the car. Um, so if you are thinking about getting an SQ5, I would try to get one with that package because it'll make it better for you dynamically. Um, you won't have as much body roll and things like that. This one does have some. It still handles like very, very well, but I already know because I've had this car for, you know, since August of just last year. Basically, I kind of know what the limits are and like how far I can kind of push it on a hill as far as like, I'm not a hill, on a turn and things like that. And so if I upgraded the suspension to be able to obviously lower the car, lower the center of gravity, that would help a lot. But then also to um, get it to be able to stiffen up when it is in the corners and things like that would be a game changer. And I drove a new X3M, um, and that car has incredible handling. Super stiff though, like for a daily, I would be pretty miserable driving that. But as far as like turning and like hitting corners or just even basic U-turns, like the way that car has almost zero body roll and can transfer, you know, its weight, it's really, really seamless and you feel like you're in a really small, compact car. So that's kind of the benchmark for me as far as handling goes. The Porsche Macan is really great too, but the X3M, I think it just really took it to another level as far as the price point and things like that. So yeah, just wanted to kind of share some 
thoughts on this car. What do I not like about it? Very few things. Like, um, one thing that they do probably need to create a recall on is with the windows. I'm a part of a Facebook group. It's boring, so sorry for the nothing. But I'm part of a Facebook group where everyone in there, you know, has a Q5 or SQ5, and it's something about this year and I think maybe a couple of years around it where the window has some type of issue with the switch or motor or something like that to where let's say the window is kind of rolled down a bit and you want to roll it up it'll have to it'll basically like go down and then you have to roll it back up literally probably the only complaint that I have about this car other than that I mean you just can spec it how you want like this I'd probably prefer the carbon fiber that they have in other cars but for the deal that I got on this car, I'm like really not complaining about it. I got this for such a sweet spot. And that's what makes this car even better. If you are looking to get one that you're gonna own for a really long time, getting this this on the used market, literally for like half the price. So these cars are around $70,000. I got this one for 34 um, with I think 33,000 miles at the time. I waited, the price wasn't always that, but I waited until they dropped the price on the car. And then that's when I was able to get like a still on these. So that's cheaper than uh, a Toyota Camry. So yeah, for context, like definitely can get a lot of car if you wait because they do depreciate really fast. That's just something you also want to keep in mind if you own it and then you're wanting to you know switch it down the road and you don't plan on keeping it long term, then that's something you'll want to calculate that. Yeah, it does depreciate pretty fast. Definitely slower than like a Q5 or basic car, non-performance car, but still um, it's not going to hold its value like a RS3 or something like that. Our models definitely hold their value the best. The S model, second best, and then the regular cars, just not as good at all. Other than that, um, I think that's probably my only complaint. I've had several conversations with other people in the past that are thinking about getting these cars for their wives. Highly, highly recommend it. I've had a couple conversations, people like, man, I want my wife to get one. And it's cool because this is a car that you will like driving as well. Like this is the ultimate, <laughs> I shouldn't say ultimate, there's a lot of good cars out there, but definitely on the top of the list with uh, fun dad cars. Let's say you're really a car enthusiast, but it's like, hey, we need an SUV, but you don't want anything super boring. This car right here, tons of fun. Like the transmission, the exhaust, the power, like the way it puts its power down to get all wheel drive. Like, and then if you want to mod this, let's say lower it, do some, add some wheels, maybe a couple, you know, tune the transmission or the engine, like, the options are pretty endless. There's a ton of support in the aftermarket for these. So something to consider, but yeah, I'd highly recommend this car. I don't have any complaints. Definitely, you know, make sure you get one that hasn't been abused and stuff like that. You know, then it's more worth it. You don't want to have a bunch of headaches because it is a German car and they are pricey to repair. So try to find a low mileage, clean example that some I don't know, retired couple had, because there are a lot of retired people that drive these cars and don't put a lot of miles on them and don't drive them nearly as hard as maybe certain car enthusiasts would. Oh, I love this car, like it's so much fun. And then the character with the exhaust, like, is so good, oh, I love it. <laughs> Waste a lot of gas for sure. I guess I'll touch on gas while we're kind of at this light anyway. So my short term memory today uh, showing I'm getting about 18.7 miles to the gallon. Um, and this is with like city driving. So city driving definitely doesn't do that great. Um, it's the low 18s. I think some of the newer RS and S3 cars do better than this, um, but this also weighs I think like 4,500 pounds. Long term over the past 5,700 miles, I'm averaging about 20 miles per gallon. That's with, you know, some road trips and things like that. So if 
you do get this car, you know, I'm assuming gas mileage isn't a big priority, but it is something to consider. It's not that great. I think the tank is 16 gallons on when the car is, you know, completely empty on gas and things like that. So it's a pretty big tank. Um, I mean, it definitely it's fine for a road trip. We have driven this to Los Angeles from Northern California seven times or several times. Um, and it's, you know, great for that and stuff but yeah you don't get that great of gas mileage in here but considering what it is I mean it kind of makes sense you get a lot of performance heavy car SUV yeah not too bad but if you baby it like you can definitely get more but if you some if you're someone that likes to have a lot of fun when you're driving <laughs> it'll definitely make you smile every time you're driving it like it's really good um, I haven't touched on ride quality it's somewhere in the middle it's definitely better than some of the BMW products I've driven. I've only driven the X3M and then a couple of like M340i's and stuff like that. So this one's definitely like in that middle ground where it's pretty uh, compliant, comfortable, you know, around town. You can put it in comfort mode and it softens things up, you know, a lot more and stuff. And then dynamic, it does stiffen up, but even then, like it's still pretty compliant and pretty well damped and stuff even over bumps um, the one thing I would say is if you are thinking about getting this car I would get it with uh, leather seats the seats that I have here are kind of like uh, not quilted I don't know what it is it was kind of like a couch cushion kind of material um, with leather along the sides I wouldn't get these seats again for sure in my next Audi. Um, they're not as comfortable for sure, but I like the car so much and the price I got for it, I compromised the seats. Um, but yeah, if I had to do it again, I would definitely just get regular leather seats. The seats in my Audi A3, just basic leather seats, super comfortable, super mushy, great for road trips and stuff like that. These seats here, I do feel a little bit more tired after a while. Um, driving it for a long, long distance like that. Um, but they do support you very well. I mean, they look good, easy to maintain, stuff like that. Um, at night, you have a little bit of ambient lighting in the car, and then the Alcantara type of material. I don't know if it's that or some type of suede on the side, but it looks really nice. Um, it's just, I really like it. Like, this in the used market is definitely such a cool bargain, and you get so much performance out of the car and a really great exhaust system. Ah, love it. It's so good. So, so good. And if you want to hear just the exhaust sounds, I do have a video of that, which I'll put in the description um, and share at the end of this video too. If you just want to hear what the exhaust is like, literally with the microphone next to it on the bumper, um, I'll share that. So, catch you guys in the next video. Peace.